Okay, gang, you've reached the end of the triplet rhythmic vocabulary course. And I want to take a minute and really make it very clear what we've just learned and what we haven't and what type of potential is now available assuming that what we've done in this course is fairly comfortable. Because I don't want the magnitude of the potential that lies in front of you to get lost on anyone. I don't want anyone to think this was the end goal. Because remember, rhythmic vocabulary, and our goal in this course in terms of triplets, is the ability to think of melodies. Melodies by themselves, right? So we orchestrated things in certain ways, but the core goal, as I've said over and over again, is to be able to turn on your rhythmic stream of consciousness and just let it go. And for it to be effortless, to go ba. Ba da ba book do da 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 ba boom boom da 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 ka boom ba ba da ba ba dum 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 ga 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 da ga da dum ba ba da da boom boom dum right. And what I just did that included swung down ups that included Afro Cuban down up that included fours and it included fives. I made sure that it did, but it came across as simply melodies, right? Just music happening. That is the entire goal of this course, right? And like I said, we applied it in groove context, we applied it on the ride, we applied it in sort of a right hand lead flow mode thing, but we never went deep into that, right? The, the technical aspects, the coordination required, um, all the creative like, uh, you know, side streets we could have gone down on each of, in any of those orchestrations, we didn't do that because that's not the goal of this course. Now. It's really important to emphasize that it's really important to make the distinction between what we just did and what is the goal and what is now very possible for you to do. And I'm going to do some playing examples here in a sec to demonstrate a lot of these ideas. But again, from this place of, of triplet rhythmic vocabulary comfortableness, uh, you could say this is a comfort with triplet, triplet rhythmic vocabulary you can move into territory that you are genuinely very interested in and bring this ability with you, right? So if you are a metal drummer um, or whatever, then you can play, you know, that halftime groove on the stack and start working on applying these concepts in a way that makes sense to you in that context. If you're a jazz drummer, right, taking these to the next step, uh, is you're a very small step away from accessing huge troves of, of uh, vocabulary, or I would say subsets of vocabulary that you can use for improv improvisation um, by just taking a few simple steps. So I'm going to think through a few next steps, a few th things that you could do, and hopefully just open the door right into other rooms of vocabulary here. I'm not going to go into those rooms because that will be the job of other courses. But I just want to really make clear what becomes possible once this, this rhythmic vocabulary core, the stream of consciousness, is, is again, mostly effortless. So let's think first about uh, flow mode, right? So flow mode, we did the right hand lead on the tom uh, uh, during a lot of this video, or during a lot of this course. So that's a great place to start. You're very familiar with what it sounds like. Um, so if you wanted to develop right your drum set playing, you're not you're not playing a groove, you're not settling into a jazz thing. You're like essentially soloing or doing what I call the infinite drum fill, right? Flow mode. Um, let's look at how this evolves very quickly, um, so that if this is something that you're like, okay, that's exactly where I want to go, you can at least start to take some first steps and you know what you're doing. So one, two, here, here, here. Let me just. I'll start with just what we started with. And then what I'm going to do is start removing notes. So I'm still got the, the faucets open. The rhythmic stream of consciousness is going on in my mind. But now I'm just playing them as ghost notes. So they're not there. So if I start with, like, for example, the down up, uh, down up improv. Okay, and then I started orchestrating a little bit, right? Small step is to get the kick drum involved, okay? 
I'm not going to go into detail of this, but uh, one way you can start thinking about it is let me try and put one or two kick drums before accents with my hand that I'm already playing, right? So. What if I replace hand accents with kick drum accents? And now I do that, but I also occasionally do the kick drum before a hand accent. So now I have two ways to use the kick drum. And I start to say, well, what about my left hand? Let me get my left hand involved, right? Whenever there's a single, let's say, I could play an accent with my left hand. So whenever I'm going like. Right, all of those steps, right, suddenly we're playing a lot of interesting drumming. All of those steps were so easy for me to do and will be easy for you to take when you follow the triple flow mode course um, because of this core skill that you developed during the course of this course. Right? Without that skill, nothing that I just did is really possible because the very melodies themselves are not available to me. Right? I'm stuck doing simple, uh, you know, repetitive, habitual melodies, and all I can do is apply the kick drum and the left hand stuff to that limited set of melodies, which is going to sound boring at the end of the day. You're going to have the same melody going over and over and over and over again, but now it has kick drum, but now it has right hand, but now you took a note out, but at the end of the day, they're the same couple melodies that you're using. That's the big problem, right? That's why I keep saying uh, the root of creative drumming is rhythmic vocabulary is the ability to think of these melodies. And that was all with me limited to the down up improv, right? The swung, sorry, swung down up way of creating melodies, right? Which is the simpler version of this, right? That's still neglecting the second triplet often. So if I open that up and say, okay, now I'm gonna do, take the same steps, but starting with, you know, let's just call it the Afro-Cuban down up, but really this is like sort of just all triplets are available to me now. And, and I take the same steps, right? Where we started, which was uh, right hand lead, right? Remove some notes. Also, I have the option of taking my ghost notes out, so. Kick drums, like I said, that replace accents or before accents. A lot of single left hands here, so if I make some of those accents. You're seeing some very simple next steps, right? Add some flams here and there. Add some hurtas, brata, brata. Add some rolls. All those small steps 
um, all those little ideas, they build on this core that I just described in great detail. So, like, look at how flow mode can so quickly become, from where you are, so much free drumming. <laughs> now, if we switch to groove mode, let's think about what we've done with groove and what is the significance of it, right? So we've essentially played a lot of melodies on the kick drum. And I believe at certain times I've talked about the on-off switch, right? So when we did, yeah, when we did like, for example, Afro-Cuban, uh, down up, improv with the kick drum underneath the groove, it was important because they're so unrealistically busy, right? No song really needs that to be able to turn it on and off. So three and a four. And a Right. Usually in groove world, I like to think of some very specific steps. Like, first step is kick drum freedom, which ideally at this point is feeling pretty nice. Next step, ghost notes. Can I get ghost notes in there? Every melody I'm playing, we have done. You have the tools to create every kick drum melody I'm doing. Now I've done the work, let's say, of working in ghost notes in there. Again, this is hyperspeed, right? These are entire courses, each one of these ideas. But that's what happens. And then you say, okay, now I've got this melody, the stream of consciousness going in my head, and I'm assigning it to the kick drum. But I don't have to assign it just to the kick drum, right? I could assign it to the kick and snare, and it could be a dialogue between them. So when I go, boom, gado, don, don, do, don, do, 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 So now the melody stays constant, but I'm assigning it differently in a groove. Ugh. Of all the times to break my head. We're on a roll, so we're just going to move it over a little bit and, you know, just hope for the best. Uh, so then we've got, oh, now I'm reassigning, right? But the same rhythmic stream of consciousness is going on. Ghost notes are in there. Um, you got the kick drum variation. You're taking things out. You're putting things in. You got ghost notes. Then you look at what's the right hand doing. All that right hand lead stuff you did on the toms can happen on the hi hat during a groove, right? Right? And likewise, now you're sort of even blurring the line between the flow mode stuff we've done and the groove-based stuff we've done, where you're kind of doing flow mode, but there's also the rules of groove. Some of them are built in, right? So you've got a backbeat, and you're sort of like, you're, you're, you're constructing like groove-like phrases, if you will, and the right hand's sort of just doing the right hand lead, but you're like sort of constraining it in a way that makes sense to interact with the groove. So all of that suddenly becomes very accessible, right? And then, the last little little uh, door I'll try to open here is, is the sort of jazz ride focused stuff that we've done so far. Um, whereas, you know, a lot of the times we would just apply the pattern to the ride. You know, boom, 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 ba dum ba dum 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 That's been awesome. And I think we talked at a couple points about ways to begin getting creative with that. But if I walk through a couple steps, again, at hyperspeed, I don't expect you to do these this week, for example, but just to show you what's possible, we're doing right hand, or sorry, uh, ride focus stuff. We can add ghost notes. We can add, uh, kicks and snares that go with the ax the right hand. And 
then we can switch between the accent version and the ghost notes. So. I can remove notes from there and bring them down here. And at a certain point, what you'll start to feel happening is that that rhythmic stream of consciousness is going. And you're, you can start to treat even that as sort of a their rhythm by itself, right? So if I'm thinking, you know, uh, you know, you have this ability to now. So imagine you're me. The rhythmic stream of consciousness is going ba ba do ba ba da, including rests. Dun dun, da da boom ba, ba da 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 dun. And then I'll apply it in a sort of very raw form first, and then you'll see me start to just add elements that dress it up essentially and start to disguise it. But you know what's going on in my head. I'm just thinking of this melody, and I've done enough of the the coordination exercises and the like, uh, you know, the groove and the this, to essentially automate the execution, and that's how this works. But you can't automate the execution if the the thing that creates the melodies isn't there. So, as an example, three, four. And the whole time, I promise you, that I'm doing that, what's going on in my head, and even out loud, even though you can't hear it, is often da 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 And even if my hands flub a note and mess something up, it still happens with my voice, it still happens in my head. So I'm not lost, right? I'm right there, and my hands just get back on track where they're supposed to be. So I hope that that is is designed to be right I, I was hoping this would be encouraging right to really emphasize what you just established as the utmost important thing you could possibly establish in triplet time so wherever you're going next um, know that that you're bringing with you to that the learning from this course and again the main takeaway Turn on the faucet, that triplet rhythmic stream of consciousness. And you're at the end of the course, but you might not be, you know, arrived at 100%, you know, you know, complete effortless mastery of this idea. I'm well aware of that. But that's the point. You've done the legwork to establish the foundation. And just know that going forward, getting that to the point where it is totally effortless, where you can flip into fours and you can flip into fives and you can flip into uh, swung down ups and you can flip into Afro Cuban down ups. That is definitely the arrival point. You've done a lot of the legwork to get there. It's worth doing whatever's left to make that totally effortless. And again, I'm talking about in here and with your voice because the rest of it can be worked out, you know, pretty easily after that. Um, enough repetition will get your coordination going. So, so yeah, I'm just very excited that we've gotten to this point, uh, and this is you know setting up the launch pad for a bunch of other really exciting stuff. So, thank you for for sticking it through with this course. I know rhythmic vocabulary is the core of the core curriculum, so you know things of that nature can be uh, a real hard, tedious study sometimes. Right? There's a lot of counting. There's a lot of thinking. It's like I want to just play cool shit. Like just let me do that. But just know that if you're at this point, you've done some super important work and it was worth your time. And it's going to be pervasive in other courses on, on this website. I'm going to be referencing these ideas, these rhythms, these melodies forever. So congratulations. This was a big accomplishment. And I'll see you in, in another course. Good luck. Talk to you soon.